to Emerald Stye to make this video. Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, I've spent way too much time in the last month trying to get my X and Y axis, axis tuned, but I think I'm getting close. As you can see, some of my main aims for this video have been on this list for a bit too long. Yeah, I guess too late for that. Hey, before I start, Jeremy Makes Things did a hilarious airing of grievances video. I'll leave a link, you gotta look at it. Sometime a couple of weeks ago, I finally finished the main hookup of the electrical power. The cable was way too long before, so I shortened it. That included 3D printing a couple of cable clamps just to keep things tidy. The main hookup's now done. So, to recap, I installed JMC 750 watt AC servos and drives to this Goblin 125 CNC lathe. The drives are set up in analog mode where they receive a voltage signal as a velocity command from this uh, Mesa 7i73 board. Zero volts, stay where you are, minus 10 volts, full speed one direction, five volts, half speed in the other direction. In hindsight, it might have been better to have commanded these drives with step direction control. There are some really good videos on tuning the drives for step direction out on YouTube. Now these JMC drivers have like a serial output port, so you can connect into a PC, and they provide like a driver software. The good thing is you can read out all the parameters and change all the parameters using the software. They also have an a simplified auto tuning mode here, which basically allows you to set the stiffness of the drive in one of 32 steps. The system also offers an oscilloscope, but I encountered a few limitations. On the one hand, the auto tune is not really a closed loop auto tuning mode, it's just a lookup table of standard settings. The second issue is while you can scale the oscilloscope's amplitude, you can't adjust its sample rate, which you can't really like zoom in and see a specific performance. And the third issue I have with this software is that the moment of inertia ratio can only be set in integer values. Now I've calculated my x-axis moment of inertia ratio at about 1.4 and my z at about 1.9. So all I can do is set one and two respectively. Now I have taken a few runs at getting the servos tuned on the Schaublin. With the assistance of a motion control expert, Wout, I got the machine up and running, and then for my awesome Patreons, I did a video on testing the lathe using Dan Gilbert's method. This made it clear just how poorly tuned my servos were. Now with the patient assistance of SMC Collins on the Linux CNC forum, we were finally able to identify root cause. The rated speed of these motors is 3000 RPM, which with the gearing I've got would give a 6 meter per minute rapid, which is for me too fast. I only want about 3 meters per minute. So I had Linux CNC set up to send a rapid command, a 10 volt signal, which would require 1500 RPM at the motor. But my drivers interpreted 10 volt maximum speed signal as 3000 RPM of the motors and accelerated away. So Linux CNC would have to regulate that back. Once SMC Collins pointed out that I needed to reset speed analog command input gain from 300 RPM per volt down to 150 RPM per volt, then I could finally get a decent tune using Tommy Light's excellent essay on how to tune a servo on the Linux CNC forum. If you'd like more detail, I'll leave a link to the Linux CNC forum below. So here's the sound comparison, jogging at 3000 RPM, which is my max speed. And with that, I'm gonna say, those drives are good enough for now. Hey cool, Tony's back. Merry Christmas, Tony. I got contacted by a viewer with a Schaublin 150 manual lathe. It looks like he's doing a lovely restoration job, but he said he's got a couple of contactors which have failed on him. So it looks like the ones from my machine should slot right in. These have uh, 48 volt AC primary coils and can switch pretty high currents. So while I know that I'll never use these things myself, they're also not the sort of thing I could ever bring myself to throw out. And that makes me doubly happy that I can donate them to Draw's lathe project. Also, 
really happy to get rid of some of this packaging material. So Merry Christmas mate. Now in a previous video I'd set up this collet release foot switch and I just used the existing sh switch which uh, Shelblin used which is bolted to the inside wall here just behind the coolant tank. I thought I got into doing CNC machines rather than cars because I don't like groveling around on the floor in the garage but hey what did I know. Right that's the switch I was talking about. Now that's a very satisfying switch. It's a lovely industrial design. It's a mechanically latching switch, so latching on and latching off each time you click it. There's sort of a selector thing here on the body, which runs a cam on the inside. I assume that cam is needed for the latching mechanism to work. As a number of you pointed out, using a mechanically latching foot switch to release the collet closer is not really safe because if I by mistake actuate that while the spindle's running, as soon as the spindle is switched off, even if it's running at like 3000 RPM, the collet would open, maybe sending the part as a projectile. So everyone recommended replace that with just a momentary switch. Maybe it's time I finally wire up the circuit board for the Billy Kurgan modified fuzz pedal because that would be a pretty cool addition to my guitar's pedal board. Now luckily my mate Phil here in Vienna had a box of old industrial switches and one of which is exactly the same switch which Schoblin used for the e-stop. It's just missing a cover. I've pulled the cover off the e-stop. I need to draw that up in CAD and 3D print a new cover to go on here. I can install this momentary switch and I'll just have to make up some brackets to, so that it's actuated by that foot switch. This is the actuation lever which came off the foot switch and went up and pushed on that existing switch. So I'm going to need to make a different one of those as well, or maybe modify this one. Now to design the new bracket, I'm going to use CAD. Here's my e-stop switch, which is on a bracket down onto the ground. I'll pick up one of these holes up here, which are the holes that were mounting that other switch, to pick up actuation from down here. I think this base casting is quite an amazing casting. One thing I would like to point out, see these little marks here with four holes? I think those are the chaplets. I think they were used to position the sand core, which made up this whole big void in the casting. They're just like little sheet metal parts to stabilize that big block of sand. They become part of the casting. There's quite a few of them. Okay, so there's my bracket design. I'm gonna make it out of this two and a half millimeter plate. Now with parts this simple, this is the sort of job where I'd be quite tempted just to get out the angle grinder, chop it out, however, there's one thing I really hate doing, it's filing out slots. I don't know why, but I just really hate it. So, let's get a machine to do that bit for me. So I've quickly modelled up that bracket. First I drew a block outline, rounded off the edges, pocketed out the slot, made a pattern out of that slot, added the hole to mount the sensor, made a pattern out of that as well, just pocketed out the upper and lower, put on some fillets, and that's the, what the final part looks like. I also have a flattened out version of it, and that's the part that I'm going to need to make a toolpath to machine. Set this up with a bunch of tabs on it. <laughs> Turns out once I did this, I found that FreeCAD Path can do this automatically. So I redid it. For sheet metal, a vacuum table would work better, but I don't have one. When I first started machining, I think I picked up like a 10 pack of these 3 8 inch shank 6mm Chinese high speed steel end mills, so they're a pain in the neck, I never really used them. Chopping something out of sheet metal seems like the perfect use for it here.
I'm guessing because of the way I'm clamping down this thin material, it's not quite flat, and therefore I probably had too much depth of cut. Right, this time I'll touch off on a high spot. I'll probably have to run the toolpath twice because it now probably won't go all the way through, but hey. Well, I rechecked my feeds and speeds. I'm running about 1200 RPM. For a six millimeter four flute, they recommend more like 1400, but okay, that's close enough. Instead of 170 millimeters per minute, I'm down at about, one, I think I've programmed 150. So the feed would seem to fit with the speed. Not exactly sure why these are dying, but I need one more pass. Let's see if we can get around one more time. Well, that cost me two crappy end mills, but oh well. I must say, I'm really starting to like FreeCAD. That automatic tab setting feature for sheet metal uh, CNC cutout, that's really helpful. Now obviously I was supposed to just drill those two holes with the CNC, but I was too lazy. It really is not a lot of effort just to do this. If I was more familiar with path in FreeCAD, I probably would have done it. Oops, totally different ends of the slots. It's very hard to get precision like this out of CNCs. Mail time. Man, isn't that super cute? It's like the little baby brother of this one. Thank you very much. White Talon Industries, guys. Go and check it out. Well, this is the way this arrived. Jim saw me making something and decided I needed some of his drops of Delrin. Not sure how much you see. The way the packet looks, maybe a one piece fell out on the way, huh? That's awesome. Thanks a lot, Jim. It's good to get in the habit of always marking on the side that you bend towards yourself. Because then it's also the way you'd bend it up on a bend break. Ah, shit. Bent it the wrong way. Lucky this is steel. In aluminium, you can't do this. Would have broken immediately. I mean, it's gonna be seriously weakened, but it's only holding a switch, right? Oh yeah, it's already cracking. Right, well I can't leave it like that, but luckily there is one way that I can make an ugly job even uglier. Right, well I think I'm going to call that a save. I haven't modelled and 3D printed the little cover for this yet. And I still haven't chopped down the plunger bracket either. But you know what it's like at this time of year. Too many different things come up, so I guess I'll have to wait till next week to get that done. Still, that should do the job. And there's my bracket in place. Well, Merry Christmas everybody. And especially big thanks to all of the Patreons and members who supported me through this year. Thanks a lot. I look forward to making content for you next year.